have done for us and all that you are doing by your spirit. Lord, we um, come in agreement together to submit ourselves unto your, unto your authority that your powerful hand might um, keep us, may it control us, may it um, shield us uh, from all things, but most importantly, may it hold us, Lord. We honor you and we thank you. We bless your holy name. Let your word um, that comes from uh, your word, uh, let it pl be planted in fertile ground and produce a harvest. We love you and we thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name that the church say, praise God. Praise God. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, what are you yoked to? What are you yoked to? Uh, we're going to come out of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, specifically verse number 14. Um, verse number 14. And the New American Standard Bible says this, Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Verse number 15. Or what harmony has Christ with Bilal? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Verse 16. Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, mm -hmm. just as God has said. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So that was 2 Corinthians chapter 14, verses Chapter 2, chapter 6, excuse me, verses 14 through 16. And the question, topic for tonight is, what are you yoked to? Uh, for a visual or a description, a yoke is a device that is attached to two animals mm -hmm. that are going in the, the same direction mm -hmm. to pull some other contraption um, behind it. The yoke is placed on the animals. The animals do not volunteer for the yoke. They do not volunteer for the task. Mm. They are the tools used in the production for a reason. The question would be, then, why have we yoked ourselves to somebody not going in the same direction? Mm. Uh, what's our excuse? The author in... Uh, Paul was talking to the Corinthian church um, because there has to be a, a sense of harmony. They have to come to work together by the grace of God. And he's um, reminded them that we don't have any business being yoked. So don't, con don't com confuse being yoked and being um, in conversation or association with someone. To be yoked is to be bound. It's to be in partnership. It's to be in fellowship. It's to be in harmony. In essence, it's to be on one accord with someone going in the same direction. So it's not to be uh, an association, you know, because we have to associate uh, on occasion with folks that do not believe who Christ is, as Jesus did with the Samaritan woman and other folks that were in the Word. So we, we do have to associate, but we don't have to be bound. We should not be bound or be in a partnership or fellowship or harmony or in agreement with folks that are unequally or non-believers. The Proverbs uh, says this. It says, um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 14 and 16, Cast in thy lot amongst us, let us all... Have one purse. My son, walk not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet, their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. That was Proverbs 1, verse 14 through 16. The Psalms, verse 1, uh, Psalms number 1, verses 1 through 2 says this, How blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of the sinners, nor sit Amen. in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. Praise God. So in essence, what um, the Bible has a strict um, reminder or regimen of how we are supposed to pair ourselves or yoke ourselves to people so that we are going in the direction towards the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. Amos 3 and 3 says this. Fine. Can two walk together? except they be agreed. That's right. And two walking together, 
not looking at the physical walk, but this is our spiritual journey mm -hmm. that we're doing together. How can we be spiritually tied together unless we make an agreement to be spiritually tied together? If a, um, a swimming team that is a, what do they call them? They are synchronized swimmers. They have made an agreement. They have been yoked together in their training, in their efforts on the, so that they can perform in harmony, in unison. Um, rowers, professional rowers, mm -hmm. are yoked together in a small canoe mm -hmm. going down one direction in a stream, pulling at the same rate with the same intensity because they have victory set in mind. So we have to keep that in consideration when we're on the journey of fulfilling our spiritual obligations or becoming fruitful for God, being free, being righteous, being whole, is that we can't bind ourselves to those that are unequally yoked, which means they do not share the same passion. They do not share the same desire to walk in the will of God. Praise God. Um, this does not take away from the love aspect as the word teaches us that we have to love those. This has nothing to do with love. So when we deal with relationships, oftentimes people will bind themselves to other people in the, um, with the, let's say, the idea uh, that they can change their I'm nature, mercy. that they can change who they are if they just uh, continue to be submissive, continue to give in, continue to overlook. Um, but as a believer, we have no business being yoked to an unbeliever. Because what will happen, as the proverb says, that when the unbeliever decides to run towards uh, the unjust thing or decides to run towards evil, because you're yoked to them, they will pull you in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not go physically, um, but on a, um, on a, what is it, guilt by association? In that aspect, then you have just committed the same thing that they have done because y'all are bound. You're an accomplice. You're an accomplice. So we have to be careful that when we um, have intertwined ourselves, that we, when we have wrapped the cords of intimacy, of relationships, of fellowships, of businesses, of all those things, we have wrapped those in a, a package called the yoke that those people that we are in agreement with, that we're equally matched. Praise God. It's like the old saying, uh, birds of a feather. Flock together. Yeah. Flock together. So what have, what's your reason for binding yourself um, to this thing that is not equally yoked with you? It's not going toward God. It's not going toward repentance. It's not leading anywhere but towards its own self. He says, do not be unequally, do not bind yourself uh, together with unbelievers. For what partnership? Now, these are really strong words because we understand what a partnership is. A partnership is an agreement made by two people uh, coming, to collect, coming collectively together to, to um, benefit from some kind of project. And both are equally liable. And equally liable. Right. So if I am equally liable uh, in a partnership, then as what we said earlier, then what my unyoked or my unfellowshipped uh, or my ungodly or uncommitted, uh, con convicted person does, that has the same bearing on me because I'm in the partnership. That's right. So what does the uh, partnership with the righteous have with the lawlessness or the fellowship have with light, with darkness? There's a comparison, difference. One is on extreme, different spectrum than the other. So how can they actually even make an agreement when they can't even come in the same room? They can't collide. One is stronger than the other. So he's, he's trying to make it really plain on how you have to be able to, when, how you should deal with those that are coming into your, um, your life, uh, wanting to draw out of you. So the partnership, we go back to the partnership. Usually... Uh, one person has the idea and the other person has something else. Um, so there's a give and, give and take. So there's a need for us to get together. However, one seeks out the other. The other one is sought after. So what is it that they've drawn themselves to you because there's something that you have that they want. So we have to be mindful that when we are binding ourselves to people, 
and that's not all that's not in an intimate way when we bind ourselves to people in a, in a mental or physical psychological spiritual way um, there is a draw that comes from you that goes to them and if you're being depleted who uh, who deposits back into you what deposits back into you if you're being drafted from yeah. there has to be some kind of return process that's right so if that return isn't a godly one then it's from the adversary so if they're taking all of my my patience they're taking all of my peace they're taking all of my joy um, then what's, what I get back in return is stress is anxiety is depression is all those things that that do not satisfy my spiritual growth and they do something to my natural man so you have to be really careful as Paul is saying to the Corinthians, there is no partnership that righteousness has with lawlessness and no fellowship that light has with darkness. And then he goes in verse 14, he says, oh, what harmony does Christ have with Bela or, or, the, or the, the, the enemy, the adversary? Mm -hmm. What partnership? There is no harmony, excuse me. There's no harmony. When we think about harmony, think about, think about the melody, the music. Um, how how they flow together, the sopranos, altos, tenors, and you got the first, second, and third, and then you have all of the instrumentation. There's a harmony mm -hmm. that goes along with to make this a composition, a composure of music. There should be a so harmony. It's not just noise. That's right. So it's just not banging on pots and boxes and paper and all of that. There's there is a uh, intentional effort to create something that is melodious. Mm -hmm. I like that word. Melodious. <laughs> so what harmony are we producing with the relationships that we have created? There should be something that comes out of it that is worth um, you dedicating so much time with and uh, being able to express that with others. There should be some kind of harmony that is pleasing and acceptable in the sight. Of God. Praise God. Yes, the B clause of verse 15 says, Or what belief believer, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? And that's pretty self explanatory. Um, I don't think there is. Um, there is one that believes that there is God and he's working on becoming better, and then there's one that, that does not believe that there is God and he's going to do whatever he wants to do because he or she is self made. So, how can we come into agreement? together on anything when we can't even agree on creation. We have to know that the enemy is really good at um, fixing up something to make it appealing to our physical sight um, and, be, and distract us from the spiritual discernment that is telling us that we should back off the warning signs. But since he has appeased our, our, our physical desires, we fall into trap. And, and once again, not, not just speaking physical desires as looks and beauties, um, right. but your, your, your physical, emotional needs, you know, from employment to, you know, some money and food and shelter and all those things. Sometimes just peace. Right. Some people attach on to your peace, to your joy, to your, um, your ability to be vocal or stand up. They, people attach on to people for various reasons, but... That's why we have to ask that God give us the spirit of discernment and that he heighten it. We all have it, but are we in tune? We have to make sure that we are so that when these people come across our path, we see them spiritually. Right, right. And that's the important part of how we are, 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 are growing in, in the Lord is that our spiritual, um, we become spiritually in tune and able to uh, decipher our eyes pop open we're able to see the things that we normally wouldn't pay attention to right. but if you're yoked to them when the animals are yoked together when one is weak he's still pulled because he's tied to that other animal yeah. when one rower is weak he's still going in the same direction because he's in the same boat as the other rower when the the, um, the, the swimmers that are, in swim, that are dancing in unison when one is tired, the other ones are still doing whatever they have to do because they have to be synchronized. Um, so there isn't getting out of it unless you decide to quit the team. So we have to make drastic decisions in the relationships that we are currently involved in, both uh, for physical pleasures or for um, financial gain or, or just for plain old um, uh, company. 
we have to take a spiritual inventory of that and to see if that relationship is one that it balances us. And if it does not balance, then it unbalances you. There isn't a, um, a person alive that can stand in the pressure, in the presence of the enemy and not be influenced by the enemy. And that's one of the reasons why that, that Paul is saying, hey, what we're doing here is detrimental to your, not only your spiritual man, but your physical man. Right. So we don't even entertain it because we say all the time, as you entertain the thought, it becomes an act, a belief and then an action. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is believe not every spirit, but try the spirit by the spirit. So we have to make sure, again, that we are um, discerning, that we are asking God, is this for me? Is this person? And we ask that he removes people in our lives that don't mean us any good. Um, because there are times that we can build people up, but there are times when we are weak, when people pull us down. So we have to be sure that the right people are in our lives so that we aren't pulled down. Praise God. So um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm challenging, challenging you to really dig down inside and do a, um, an inventory of your relationships. Because somewhere in those relationships... Is where we have been stagnated at. Mm -hmm. And it could come from us trying to be loyal, um, not want to be intrusive, not want to hurt feelings. However, it's imperative that we begin to sever ties, that we begin to undo the cord that we've tangled up so that we can be free. Because we can't grow, you won't grow in the speed or in the amount of time that God has already um, ordained you to be. If you keep being bound to things that God didn't intentionally mean for you to be bound to, yoked to, uh, in a partnership with, in an agreement with, in a fellowship with, in communion with, in a concord with, why have we bound ourselves to things that God says we should bind ourselves to? In a classroom setting, and this analogy just came to my head, but in a classroom setting, there's always the kids who are eager to learn in the very front. Mm -hmm. And in the back are probably the kids that kind of slack off, maybe want to sleep or talk or whatever they do during class, aside from completely focusing on the lesson. So you will rarely see those kids that are in the front of the class move to the back because their priority mm -hmm. is to learn. Right. And in our spiritual walk, we have to be just like those kids in the front of the class. We have to be right in the front, not distracted by what's going on in the world. Yes, it hurts because most of the time, once we become saved, not all of our friends made that decision with us. So we have friends who have not committed their lives and they're doing one thing and then we're doing something else. But that's okay because the word of God declares that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's right. So even if our mother and our father forsake us, Jesus will be there. But we have to be like those kids in the front of the class and relentlessly pursue God regardless of what everyone else is doing. Praise God. Praise God. And that's what our, our, all of us sh should have to desire, that we um, stand in the front and that we don't be uh, followers, but we be leaders and we follow Christ and not follow the, the bad behaviors or the bad decisions or what the world says is okay or acceptable. Um, God has ordained us and he has called us um, by his holy name and called us peculiar. He's called us righteous. He called us, even called us faithful in, in occasion, but he also called us blessed. So in that, um, we have to know that we are, we are attractive to things that aren't um, called uh, favored, aren't called blessed, aren't called holy, aren't called sanctified, aren't called righteous. Those things are attracted to us um, because of what we offer or because of what they want to take away from mm -hmm. us. So when I bind myself to something, it should be intentional because I see um, the spirit of God. In that, I've, I've heard the voice of God saying, that is what um, I've created for you. Um, learn, learn it, 
use it because it's what will catapult you to where I created your destiny to. And the only way that I can do that is I learn what his voice sounds like. Yes. I can't do it if I just if I um, make a whole bunch of assumptions and look at an opportunity and say it seems like God. We have to know that it is God because we we should know by now that the enemy is able to dress up anything. That's right. And make it look like it's a gift from God. But um, he is a deceiver. The word says he is a liar. He is the author of it. So we have to know the voice of God so that we can understand what it is that God requires us to be yoked to. When it comes into relationships and finances and things of that, that, that nature, we have to know that we have to be um, listening, actively listening for the voice of God. And if he used the word mm -hmm. and tried to twist the word to tempt Jesus, then he knows what he has to use to try to tempt you. Mm -hmm. But be not deceived and be sure to try the spirit by the spirit. We have to listen. We have to be quiet. That's how why we have to know his voice. Because he'll lead us and he'll guide us in those times when we're being tempted. But if we don't know his voice, then it'll sound like everything else and we'll be easily deceived. Praise God. So um, your, your, your assignment is that um, whatever cords that we have have uh, attached ourselves to or other people that we have attached ourselves to, that we unwind those cords and allow them to stretch out for God to be able to attach, to, attach them to whatever thing that they're supposed to um, be attached to. For well, Ecclesiastes says there, there may be one, over, though one may be overpowered, mm -hmm. two can defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Yes. Um, so I want my core of three to be uh, include the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and whomever that he desires that I'm supposed to be bound to That's and right. harm me with, in fellowship with, in unison with whomever those are. I want my cords to be used for that and not to be used as a rope to hang myself. So the question was, um, why have you yoked yourself to someone or something that is drawing you down. And a good way just to identify if you say, well, I'm unsure. You, mm -hmm. you gave us um, the assignment to examine. What does it do to your spirit? Mm -hmm. Does it give you peace? Does it bring you joy? Mm -hmm. Or is there always an issue? Does it cause you to um, revert back to old habits and uh behaviors before you were a believer? Mm -hmm. If it does, it's not of God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. And you'll know it. Um, we'll say this and we'll, get, we'll be done. Oftentimes, we have turned a deaf ear mm -hmm. to the Spirit of God concerning the things that we have grown fond of. Whatever they do to our mm -hmm. spiritual Jesus. or our physical being, because we have grown fond of those things, we ignore the, we ignore the warning signs. We ignore um, the outbreaks. We, mm -hmm. we ignore the, the abuse. We ignore the physical and the, the verbal, you know, um, outlashes. And we ignore all of that because they they're doing one thing for us that we that really really enjoy. But what about all the other things that they take from you? Mm -hmm. You know, how much are you willing to sacrifice um, before you say enough is enough? So whatever those yokes are. And um, they're between you and God, whatever those yokes are, let's begin to break those yokes so that um, we put on the, the yoke of Christ. For well, he said that his yoke is easy and his burden light. is light. And, and what he's requiring or, or addressing is that his word is his yoke. And that that is what should lead you, should guide you, that it be as the song that says, a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Mm -hmm. That is the yoke he's referring to uh, and, and not the yoke of mankind. Okay. So uh, we came from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through verse 16 with the topic of, um, uh, what is that? What are you yoked to? What are you yoked to? And we also refer to Proverbs um, chapter 1, verses 14 through 16, Psalms verse 1 through 2, and Amos 3 and 3, and Ecclesiastes 4 and 12. 
Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to look at your word together tonight. We thank you, Father, that it is, as a pastor declared, that it is light uh, unto our uh, path and that it is health unto all of our flesh. We ask, Lord, that you would cause us to thoroughly examine ourselves and yes, anything God. that we have attached ourselves to, that we have willingly yoked ourselves to, we ask, Father, that you sever that yoke at the root, Father, that if there is anything unlike you that is hindering us from moving forward, Father, or being what you have called us to be and walking according to your purpose, we ask, Lord, that you break it now, that you forgive us for entertaining things, Father, that are unlike you, and that you cause us to turn from those things. Don't allow there to be pleasure or enjoyment in the things um, that place a barrier between us and you, but cause us to chase after you wholeheartedly. We thank you, Father, because we know that if we ask, you are more than able to do it, Father. Yes, your right. word declares, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door would be open. So we are asking tonight, Father, that you would break every ungodly yoke and that you would restore us unto you, Father. We thank you for all of your blessings and for every caller. Lord, we ask that this word would uh, penetrate their hearts, Father, and that in due season it reaps a bountiful harvest. Just in the name of Jesus that we pray. Praise God. Bless God. Um, so Trinity, we'll see you Sunday at uh, 11.15. For all those others, go find your place to worship that God can get um, the very best out of you. Praise. Uh, good night. Good